Lord, you are my shelter. As I was reading Psalm 27, I kept praying and asking God for a fresh revelation and somehow David's strong desire to be in the house of the Lord just jumped out of that passage. And I was reminded of this picture of the prodigal son feeling completely dejected, defeated, lonely, scared, and, and as he's walking back home, he's got his head down and he lifts his head up and he sees his father running towards him with his arms wide open, welcoming him back home. And God's so gracious, he welcomes us back no matter how far we've gone away from him and no matter how scared we may be, he just brings us back to his home which is filled with singing, dancing and it's just such a joyous place to be in. And that picture helped me understand what David was feeling when he said that he wanted he had that strong desire to be in the house of the Lord. In your house I am safe and secure My rock, my tower, Lord, you are my shelter My rock, my tower, Lord, you are my shelter You may be at a dead end of pain and sickness, a destination to hopelessness. But Jesus' death on the cross is not past, it is present continuous. That breaks these roadblocks of pain, sickness, Satan and death. Greetings. Thank you so much for joining us today on this telecast of Living Strong. As always, it's our joy to come your way, spend this time with you in the Word of God, and uh, pray also, also pray with you before we close out the telecast. We believe in the power of the Word of God, that just the truth of God's Word coming into our hearts, into our lives, will enlighten us, uh, will empower us and equip us uh, to live victorious lives. We are currently taking time just to look at the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, the work that he finished, and how we live out of that in our daily lives. Uh, we mentioned in, the early, in an earlier telecast that when Jesus said on the cross, his final words, it is finished, uh, he was using a single Greek word, tilio, uh, which has a threefold meaning. First of all, it means that something has been brought to an end. It's the closure, it's the finish of something. Jesus brought an end to uh, the, the control or, or the, 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 the fall of man that, 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 that Adam sinned, put us all under. Uh, he brought an end to that so that we could now have the opportunity of coming out from being under those things and living victorious. The second aspect of that meaning of that word simply means uh, a, a sense of completion. Uh, that means Jesus Christ completed what he had been commanded or ordered or commissioned uh, by the Father to do. There's a completion of it. He finished what he was commanded to do. Thirdly, there's a, a sense of cancellation of debt. That means a debt or something that is owed is being fully paid. So that's finished. The debt is closed. It's over. It's cancelled. So that's another aspect of the meaning of the word tilio, a, a fully paid debt or a tribute that had to be paid, was paid in full. So when Jesus Christ died on the cross, our debt that came upon us because of Adam's fall was fully paid on the cross. So it was an end, a closure to that. It was a completion of what the Father had sent him to do. It was a cancellation of our debt. It is finished. The work has been done. So what we are challenging ourselves is that here and now, as we begin or as we journey through life as believers, 
we must learn to live out of that finished work of Christ on the cross. We looked at the first aspect of it, which had to deal with the issue of sin. And very briefly, in our early telecasts, we talked about how we live victorious over sin uh, because of what Jesus Christ completed for us on the cross. What I want us to consider today uh, on this telecast is our victory over sickness because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. When I say sickness, of course, uh, our immediate thought goes into, you know, all the problems we have in our body, uh, things that affect us, our sickness and disease and pains, disorders and so on. Uh, but I do not want to limit it, and the scriptures don't limit it exclusively just to the body. There are problems in the area of the mind, what we would call as emotional problems, hurts and pains and fears and uh, bondages, things in the area of the mind, which are also uh, sicknesses in one way, although they would be sicknesses of the mind. They have to deal with, our, with the mental faculties, the capabilities of a person. So whether the sickness has to deal with the mind or the body, I want us to understand that Jesus Christ dealt with all of it on the cross. Now, how do we know that? We begin, of course, with Isaiah's prophecy in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 4 and 5. When Isaiah is speaking over 700 years prior to the death of Christ on the cross, Isaiah prophesied, he foretold what Jesus would do on the cross. And that beautiful, detailed description of the cross, prophecy of the cross, Isaiah also states that Jesus would deal with sickness on the cross. He talks about him paying the penalty or taking on the punishment on the cross that will result in our shalom. The Hebrew word shalom uh, talks about total well-being, well-being of spirit, soul, body, socially, economically, in every way. Shalom means total well-being. So listen to those scriptures, which of course may be very familiar to some of us. Uh, it says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. So there's a lot that, uh, that Isaiah says saying here in these two statements. But look at the specifics concerning sickness and disease. He says he has borne our griefs. The Hebrew word there surely means sickness. He has borne our sickness. He has carried our sorrows. The Hebrew word makob means pains. He talks about the fact that by his stripes we are healed, are being made whole emotionally, physically. And he says here, the chastisement for our peace, or the chastisement, the punishment that brought us peace, shalom, total well-being, was upon him. That means he bore the punishment so that we could have shalom. Now, it is very interesting that Matthew, when he writes his gospel, by the uh, inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he's quoting Isaiah, and he quotes these verses uh, in relation to the Lord Jesus Christ, healing people of all, demon, all kinds of demonic bondages and healing them of sickness and disease. So Matthew, when he quotes these verses, is, is clearly referring to physical sickness and disease and uh, the torments that are brought into human life because of wicked spirits. Uh, so uh, when Isaiah says he's borne our griefs and carried our sorrows and by his stripes we are healed, he is not exclusively referring to spirits spiritual conditions. He's including physical and emotional conditions by the way the Holy Spirit uses it in the Gospel of Matthew. So Matthew chapter 8 verses 16 and 17, the Bible says, when evening had come, they brought to him those who were demon-possessed. He cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. Verse 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. So Matthew is quoting Isaiah and he's saying, look, Jesus, he took our sicknesses and diseases. And here, as Jesus was healing the people, he was giving them a foretaste or a down payment, a prepayment uh, based on what he would do on the cross. So throughout the Old Testament, we have people who by faith had their sins covered, who by faith had their sins forgiven. How could it be possible? Because they were drawing on a forepayment, on a 
prepayment or a down payment on what Jesus would, would do for them on the cross. He was going to go and pay for it all. Uh, and so here in this case, as Jesus is healing the people, setting them free from demon powers, he was doing it because of, what, of the work he would do on the cross, but here was a prepayment, an advance payment, if you will. Enjoy in advance the blessings of what I will finish for you on the cross. So I want us to understand that through the cross of Jesus Christ, we have victory over sickness, over disease, over demonic torments, or over anything that would disturb shalom, anything that would deprive us of shalom, total well-being. That includes our workplaces, and that would include peace in our social relationships, family relationships. It would include anything that disturbs shalom. And Jesus Christ paid for us, uh, for our shalom on the cross. And therefore today, we can live out of that. That means you and I must say that has been paid for and has been purchased for me. So I'm going making a choice to live out of that finished work of Christ on the cross. See, the problem is this, that many believers do not know this truth or do not understand this truth. They've never been informed. They've never been taught that Jesus Christ did this work for us on the cross. They don't even know it. So many believers would assume, you know, when they face sickness and sick, face disease, they just assume that, okay, this is just part of life and I have to take it. Uh, some may even spiritualize it, saying God is trying to teach me something through all of this. Uh, sure, we can learn lessons. and Sure, we can develop, you know, strength and uh, all of that. But you don't have to put up with something that Jesus took away for us on the cross. Whatever Jesus did on the cross, he did it with an intent for us to enjoy the benefits of what he did for us. And so uh, we see in the church that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ has instructed us to minister healing just as he ministered healing to people on the basis of the cross. You and I minister healing to people on the basis of the cross. So as believers, we can pray for one another. We can pray for people who may be sick or may be hurting body, mind, or even deal with other situations in their lives that disturb the shalom. And we can do it on the basis of the cross. Because you say, Jesus paid for your shalom. Jesus paid for your healing. Jesus paid for your emotional well-being. And therefore, on the basis of the cross, we enforce that victory in your life. We enforce that. We want to see that healing take place, whether it's physically, emotionally, or a, a turnaround of a life situation that is disturbing their shalom. So we need to do, in, do that intentionally as we minister to people. And also, for our own personal lives, we, by faith, receive what Christ did for us on the cross in relation to sickness and disease, in relation to healing and well-being in our body and our mind, and in relation to shalom uh, for our total life. Uh, so you and I, by faith, say, Jesus paid for this, and I will have it in my life. Of course, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy the blessings of God. He doesn't want us to enjoy the goodness, the fullness of what Jesus paid for on the cross. So he's going to come to violate that. He's going to come to steal and, uh, and take it away or try to keep it away from us. But we need by, to, by faith, receive that and stand our ground. I want to point us to a couple of other references in Scripture uh, in relation to this. Uh, and then we will close, we'll pray together. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, as Paul is dealing with sin and uh, all of that, he also mentions about the body. And here's what he says. In verse 13, he says, Foods for the stomach, stomach for foods. God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. And then he says in verse 20, For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So he says, listen, this body is not for sin. Now, would you tolerate sin in your body? No, we're not supposed to. We, are, on the basis of the cross, we say we refuse to sin. Now, on that same basis, and he says here, the, law, the body is for the Lord and the Lord is for the body. That means my body belongs to God. And the Lord is for my body. That means he 
is for my body. And he is not only the Lord who is our holiness, he is also the Lord, our healer. So as the Lord who is my holiness, my body belongs to him. He is for my body. That means holiness is over me and in my body. In the same sense, in that same sense, in that same way, because he is healer, his healing is for my body. Because the Lord is for my body. All that the Lord is, is for our body. He is healer, therefore healing is for your body. Healing belongs to you. It's for your body. Because the Lord is for your body. And he says in verse 20, You were bought with a price, glorify God in your spirit and your body, which belong to God. You see, the body belongs to God. God is interested in it. And if the body belongs to him, would he make the body sick when he says, I am the Lord your healer? Of course not. That's not what he's going to do. If he's the Lord, my healer, and my body is something he's purchased, he's going to make sure that he provides healing for my body. And so we need to think in those terms. We need to believe along those lines and receive healing for our bodies because Jesus Christ paid for it on the cross. And we live out of that finished work of Christ. And as we said on the last episode, the Holy Spirit is here to bring to us everything Jesus provided for us on the cross. And he does the same thing when it comes to healing and wholeness in our body. Romans 8 and verse 11 says, The Holy Spirit dwells in us. He quickens our mortal body. So God quickens our mortal body by the presence of His Spirit. That means He gives life. He gives strength. He gives wholeness to our body by His Spirit. So I want to encourage you to live on the basis of the finished work of Christ on the cross. When you deal with sickness, when you're ministering to people and as well as for your own self, live on the basis of the finished work of Christ on the cross. All People's Church is happy to announce the release of three new publications, Receiving God's Guidance, Offenses Don't Take Them, and Water Baptism. These are available for free. You can use these resources for your personal study or in small groups, churches, and ministries. So download these at apcwo.org publications or request a free copy by writing to us at contact at apcwo.org. We trust that this telecast opened your heart and mind to another aspect of what Jesus provided for us through his death and resurrection, that he gave us the ability to not only to minister healing to people, but also receive healing and wholeness and shalom to our own lives. And as I pray, I want you to believe with me. Just simple faith would do it. That You believe with me that you will receive healing uh, from your sickness, healing whether it's physically or emotionally, and also that shalom will flow into your life. Areas where, the, where total wellness has been disturbed, that as we pray, God will bring about a change in those areas. I want you to believe with me and let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, on the basis of the finished work of Christ on the cross, I take authority over sickness and disease in any of those listening to me right now. I break the power of that sickness and disease and I command it to leave every disorder in their body, every chronic illness in their bodies. I command it to leave every spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. I command it to leave. Let there be complete wholeness and well-being, body and mind, being administered to them right now by the power of your Holy Spirit, Father. And we receive it and we thank you for it. Let shalom flood our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. Hi there. We're just delighted to introduce to you our free church app. The main highlight of our church app is what we call the toolkit, which has eight powerful sections filled with the Word of God for you. We have a section called Gospel with Tools to help you share the gospel with your friends. We give you videos. We have a section called Reasons, where we provide answers for commonly asked questions that you might encounter. When people ask you, how do you know that God exists? How do you know that God created everything? Why do you believe Jesus Christ is unique and so on? Questions that you need that you will face and there are answers there. We have a section called Faith Builders where we list scriptures on various areas of the Christian life. 
to help build your faith and make your declaration and act on the word of God. We have a section called Identity where we give you all the scriptures that you need to know to establish your personal identity of who you are in Christ. We firmly believe that who you are in Christ is who you really are. Uh, there's a section called On How To where we give you instructions or guidelines on how to do various aspects of ministry. How do you minister healing? How do you minister deliverance? How do you lead somebody into the baptism of the Holy Spirit and several other areas that you would encounter in ministry? We have a section called Group Study Guides where we give you several guides to be used in small groups to study the Word of God together on various topics and themes and this, this will keep on growing. We have a section called Principles where we give you the Word of God to help you uh, make right choices and decisions as you encounter various scenarios in everyday life. And then we have a section called Lifestyle uh, where it tells you the, what the Bible says on various issues that you may face in life. And so this toolkit is something that's really important that you'll keep coming back using almost on a day-to-day -day basis. In addition to the toolkit, we of course have all our sermons available to you, the audio, the video, the sermon notes, and the series. We have our TV programs available on the app so that you can watch it anywhere, on demand, anytime. We have our worship videos so that you can listen to uplifting worship music from our worship band. We have all our books available so you can read the books on your mobile device. And of course, we have the ability to connect to our services live from wherever you are in the world. So make sure you head out to the app or Google Play stores Search for All People's Church Bangalore. Download the app right away. Enjoy the journey. I'm sure it's going to be a great blessing to you.